Council, uh, Stephen Kalonzo Msioka, particularly on the issue of violation of the basic rules of natural justice. And he has said one of those basic principles of natural justice is that no one should be condemned and heard. Yesterday was a sad day for this country because His Excellency Regadi Gashagwa, who had submitted himself to the jurisdiction of both houses of parliament and never missed a sitting, never was late, both in the National Assembly and in the Senate. And even when he was given the opportunity to sit as his charges were being read to him, he chose to face his accusers on his feet rather than on his knees. And he stood throughout the reading of the 11 charges. The last two weeks must have been very stressful for him. And as a human being, there's only so much stress you can take. His doctors have told us here today that when he was admitted here, he had serious chest pains. In fact, he had very high blood pressure. The stress he had gone through, he was short of getting a stroke. But they admitted him, they have managed him overnight. And we thank Dr. Gikonyo and his able team of doctors for the good care they have given His Excellency regarding Gashan. But for Parliament, if we ever doubted that our Parliament is under capture by the executive, a very overbearing executive, last night was our evidence. Our Parliament is dancing to the tune of the executive both the National Assembly and the Senate. There was no reason why this proceedings could not have been postponed until Saturday. What was the hurry? When Speaker King withdrew to his chambers, what were his instructions? We suspect and we believe he was told by stroke of midnight, you must be done with this man. And that is what happened. The law is clear. The rules are clear. If they had a special committee, they had 10 days. We do not have a, a limitation for the plenary. Why was the Senate hired to crucify this man and bury him politically? All we can suspect is that Mutuse was just a hard assassin on a mission. And that was evident throughout course examination. And we must thank exactly the Deputy President lawyers. They brought out the truth that, and this is what Senator Wambua asked Mutuse, whose motion is this? <laughs> you could tell he was not the owner of the motion. He was just a gun for hire. And through cause examination, that became very evident. But today, apart from the principle of a man not being condemned and hard, especially when he's on his back in a hospital bed, the second principle that was broken by the House, which is a fundamental principle of natural justice, is that you shall not be a judge in your own cause. The rule of bias is a very basic principle of natural justice. Both speakers of the two houses had been mentioned as shareholders, beneficiaries of an arrangement in Kenya Kwans. They were interested parties. And one of them had in fact, before the matter appearing before him, Speaker Otangula, I think, was in the Machakos County when he showed his bias on a matter coming before him. He had already pronounced himself as to what should happen to Rigadi Gashagwa, who was going to appear before him. Open bars were shown by the Speaker Wetangula, Deputy Speaker Sholei, Majority Leader Kimani Shunga, 
the chief whip or sorrow, and there could have been a fair trial. Forty God. So today we want to say this, that as a country we miss an opportunity to showcase that we have one of the best constitutions, not in Africa, in the world, the most progressive. Last night it was being tested. As a country under the rule of law, we should have respected and observed the two principles, fundamental principles of natural justice, and we let our country down. However, all is not over. As His Excellency has said, our last line of defense is the judiciary. We pray and we hope. As His Excellency's team appears before court, they will do justice. And this is what the Senate should have done. They were not politicians last night. They were jurors. They were judges. They should have been fair. They should have allowed time for Gashaga to defend himself. But this will be a basic ground upon which I believe the decision of the House can be invalidated and justice shall be done. This, we want to say thank you to our senators, our leader in the Senate, Senator Wambu of Kitui, I think captured everything as NEO stands for. Our leader in the National Assembly, Honorable Robert Mbui, spoke for all of us as as NEO. But their counterparts in ODM spoke a different language. So today, even as we go forward, we can no longer pretend that we are like-minded. On impeachment, we did say this was not a priority for Kenya. Kenyans have more serious issues. Kenyans cannot take their kids to school because of the failed new funding model in our universities. Patients are dying because when you go to hospitals now, dialysis, you are being turned away. When you have no money, you are a poor person, you are condemned to death by William Ruto and his failed policy, Adani Shah. These are issues that even as we speak, as as new, we have differed, not just on this impeachment, not just on joining the bread based government, we have also differed on Adani, and yesterday we were in court led by a senior counsel. Kenyans will on 22nd of October see who is really fighting for them? Because we'll be back in court to continue the fight against corruption. In open court. In open court, we will be there on 22nd. and welcome all Kenyans to come. But the matter as it rests today, rests with the judiciary, is the last line of defense, is our only arm of government that has not been captured. And we pray to God, because between this nation and disaster is the judiciary. That is our shield and defender.